Hello. In this video, you're going to learn the basics about Meteor publications. First, you're going to start with the auto-publish package that's going to publish everything from your database in the server to your client, so you can use it right away, this data. Later, we are going to remove this package because you don't want to have all your data all the time in the client. And then you're going to learn how to publish only what you want to see. And then also how to ask for this data from the client side. And we're going to also learn how to not publish everything. Maybe you want to hide a specific field. And to wrap up, you're going to show like how Meteor can provide you tools that the screen is going to react like in a very easy way. So your data in the UI is always up to date. So let's start by showing how it works with auto-publish. Like when you create a package with Meteor Create, usually the auto-publish is already there in the example. So like right now, this package, if you look here, I already have my links and my links are coming from the database and I don't have any code that is sending this link from the server to the client. The, the data is already here because of auto-publish. So if I just go here and I just clean this in the Meteor Dev2 extension and I'm going to refresh, you can see like the links are going to be added for me. But I don't have any code controlling this. It's just the auto-publish package working. So I want to remove the auto-publish package because I don't want to do this here anymore. So I'm going to save. Meteor is going to restart my server because I removed the package. And that's it. So if I refresh now, let me clean this one more time. I don't have links here. So we can put a, a log here so you can see what's happening now. Like these were the links. I can just put a log here. And you're going to see like these links are going to be just an empty array because I am not published the data anymore. So if I return to the console, it's empty array. Okay. So I don't have this magic anymore publishing all my data. So now I need to say to Meteor like, oh, I want to publish the data this way and I need to provide a name. So let's go to our server. So we need to write a function like Meteor publish. We need to choose a name. I'm going to put like all links. And then I need to provide the function to publish this data. So Meteor collections, they are MongoDB collections, but they have some special features like to provide a cursor that a publication can understand. So this is basically the same as how to publish. But if I save this, you are going to see that my links are not going to my client yet. You can see here, I don't have links. Why? Because I need to ask this data from my client now. It's not how to publish anymore. So the package was removed. So I need to come here and I can put here, like to be very simple, like Meteor subscribe. And I need to choose the same name, like all links. Okay, let's save this. And now I have my links again. So it's very simple. Like I just put a, the name here and I get the names there. I can have a different publication as well. Let's play around a little bit and let's put like get links by sponsor. Oh, sorry by sponsor and I can have my sponsor name here or just sponsor. Okay. So it's a new publication. And in this case, I'm going to filter by sponsor name. So if you see here, I have like this name secret sponsor. I can just rename it to sponsor. I think it would be better for our example. Let's rename it to sponsor. So uh, let me let me remove all the links that I have from a database. So I'm going to remove it. Okay, I don't have links in my database anymore, I believe. Yeah, no records found. So when I restart my server, this code is going to run again and it's going to insert my links. And now I have the sponsor field. So let me check here one more time. Yes, I have my Oh, I don't have my sponsor field. Where is my sponsor field? Oh, I have a bug in my code. Let me just get all this data here, like my link. And I can just spread my links property here. And let's save, but I need to remove again. Okay, I don't have any links here now. Okay. Uh, and I have my links with my sponsor field. Now I can filter, but I like all my sponsors are called Meteor. So I'm going to change at least one to like Meteor 2. 
And now on my client, if I refresh, I'm still getting all my links. Just wait a little bit. Yeah, my links are coming. And if I go to my client, I can change like get links by sponsor. Sponsor. And I need to provide a sponsor here. I can get like Meteor. So at this point, I should get just the links that are sponsored by Meteor. That I have three instead of four. Let's see if this is working. Yep, it's working. Like if you look to my database again, we have Meteor 2. And if you look to do, do the tutorial, this link is not going to be published here. So one more time, just to be sure we are doing the right code, Meteor 2 now, so I should see just one link. And that's it. You can, of course, put more logic here. Look and say like, okay, if I created this link, like the user ID, so I could have like get links by user. And I could get even from my connection. So like Meteor, we have a special this here. And you could have like my Meteor function. And I could have like user ID, this.userID. Meteor is going to inject this user ID for you. So it's the authenticated user. In this case, we don't have authentication, don't have users. But just to show you that you can play around with this idea of getting a filtered publication. But it still can have, maybe we'll have a problem because let's suppose that this is sponsor here, it's not a public information. Like I just want to filter in the server, but I, it's not public. I don't want to expose who is sponsoring this link, but I need to filter because of some business, business logic here. So if you look here, I can see my sponsor here. So that's not good for my business. I don't want to expose my sponsor there. So I'm going to return to my server. I'm going to use the field selector here and I'm going to say sponsor zero. So I'm going to use the sponsor to filter my data, but I don't want to publish this field to my client, okay? So I'm going to refresh, and let's see if this is working. See, now I don't have the sponsor fields here anymore, so my, my data is safe in the server. Of course, you need to be careful with this because a simple mistake for one developer can expose this information. And you can also select a specific field. In this case, I just want the sponsor. So probably this is going to be like this because now I just have the sponsor. That's not what you want in this case. But it's important to specify what you want or what you don't want because that can save like a network for your clients. If you look to this list here, you can see like how many kilobytes you are going to send. And when you remove fields, of course, you're going to send less data, then you're going to spend less network for your clients. So that's how Meteor fields and Meteor publication work in general. And you can filter, you can put anything that you want there. And just wrap up, let's see how, why my page is reacting to this change. Like that's really easy, right? So let's show you a little bit here how you could do this like kind of manually. Oh, sorry, let me just copy this code here. So I can import a tracker and I can have my collection as usual. And I'm just putting like this code in the startup phase of Meteor. And I'm going to just run this. And you're going to see that this tracker out runs is going to refresh, like to run again every time that I have a change. So it's like a reactive code. So when there is something new to this cursor, this code is going to run again. That's why I put this count here. Let's save. Let's go to our console. So if I refresh, can you see like it's running and it's running again because the first time it's running, but there is no data. So I call Meteor subscribe. So there is data coming. So it's reacting and it's reacting. Like even if I change something here, let me put this here, remove my face. I can put like Meteor tutorial two, do the tutorial two. Oh, it's not good with resizes. Yeah, I can save here. And if you look here, oh, that's nice to, to also see that because I, I add the one that is not going to be in the UI because this is the Meteor 2 sponsorship. So do you see that's not running? So Meteor is smart to not like react to every change, just the change that you have a cursor. But now let's change this one because we have a cursor for this one. So you can see here and you can see it also run my tracker. Can you see? and it's updated here. So the tracker is a way that you can react to any change. 
But as you're using React, Meteor already have a package that's called React Packages or Meteor React Data specifically. And this package is here. So you have like a hook because in React right now, everybody's using hooks because it's the best way. And then you can have a use tracker. So you can have this data reactive here. You don't need to use tracker directly because there are a lot of edge cases that you need to be aware. So you should not do this in a React application. You should have just like use tracker. And it's very similar to use the effect, but it's not exactly the same. So you should read the documentation, but it's really nice that you can get this UI that is responding. And like, again, I have like follow the guide and I can just try to move a little bit here. So let's add this, let just go here. Oh, why I can't add this? Let me find again. Uh, and then put like the two here. I'm going to save and watch this part here. Watch the left side and reach the docs, read the docs. It's really fast because Mitchell is watching all the chains and publishing to the client. But remember, if I change something in this one here, that's not in my cursor, it's not in my filter, it's not going to do anything. So Mitchell is smart enough to, to take these decisions, to make these decisions. Okay, so that was the, pro the goal of this video, to show you like the basics of Mitchell, how to filter the data, how to filter the fields that you want to publish, and how to benefit from this reactive way that Mitchell provide to you like out of the box in a really, really nice way. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.